Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and some years ago I went out to a building site in the UK to look at Porotherm blocks which are a product from Wienerberger and these clay blocks have been used all over the continent for years and years. I've seen them every time I go abroad, I see them being used. They're so common that you wonder why they don't get used more in the UK. So I went out to find out what they were all about and more importantly, how to actually lay them. The first thing to say is it's a clay product. So as a clay product, I mean, clay's been around for, well, how many thousand years? You know, it's a building material which is tried and tested. And it's produced to very precise dimensions. So that means that once you get your base course in and you get it absolutely level on a sand and cement base, from that point on, when it's level, it's got no lips in between each block. So you slide the level along to make sure you're not catching any edges. And once you do that, once you get that first course in, not only level but plumb, after that you use what is basically a modified tile adhesive, which you can either apply by dipping the block into a gorilla tub full of the adhesive, or better still, getting a roller, which is a, a nice little machine that goes on the top and applies a level bed of adhesive all the way along. And after that, what you're doing is just placing the blocks on there. They interlock, so they're structurally very, very good. And you may be surprised to find that even though they're hollow and they're clay, they've actually got 10 newton meter rating, which if you think about it, even the high strength blocks are usually only around seven newton meters. So there's plenty there. And I've seen many cases where they've laid bison beam straight on top of the blocks without any difficulty at all so they are load bearing you put down your pad stone you can put your steel beams on top of them and away you go and one of the really good things about these blocks is that they don't tend to crack like the air creep blocks and you don't need that bed joint reinforcement under the windows which you have to do with some air creep jobs they are reasonably thermally efficient they've got all these pockets of trapped air inside them but you would probably still be looking for a cavity wall insulation on top of that if you want to get air tightness then the way to do that is to parge the inside of them it doesn't matter whether you're doing dot or dab or anything like that and that, that is pretty much the same when you're using air creep blocks just to fill up all those little gaps you just put a parge coat on and uh, then you can go with your dot and dab plasterboard or whatever else you want to do now I would just say one thing about damp and that is that these are porous so they allow the building to breathe if you like in other words they're vapor permeable provided you've got something on the outside which is also vapor permeable or will allow the moisture to escape but bear in mind that that porosity does also mean that you can get problems with rising damp and I've seen a lot of this in Spain particularly where they seem to just chuck the blocks down build and then they're surprised that a few years down the line they've got rising damp and you may think okay a hot country like Spain why would they have rising damp well it's a case of evaporation wicking more moisture up from the ground so the thing to do there the best way of doing it is to get yourself a slab to build off an internal slab so that's actually got a membrane in it so the whole thing is protected from any damp and then you can build straight off the slab without bothering about putting in a DPC but it, you're only using these on the internal skin by the way you're not using them on the outer external skin unless you're doing something like a cladding I wouldn't necessarily recommend them for external skins with a render because I don't think it works but uh, I stand to be corrected on that if you've done it and you've had success with it then let me know about that but anyway so there they are Wiener Burger now availability is an issue because I wanted to build an extension with these I was so impressed by them I thought yeah I love to do an extension I can do that I don't need a bricklayer and um, when I looked at availability they weren't really interested in supplying me enough to just to do an extension they were looking for new builds, housing estates, things like that. And they, they haven't really got that kind of distribution, which allows you to go to the merchants, pick up a few packs and start building a little extension or something like that. And I think until they do that, they're never going to compete with air creep blocks because air creep blocks are stopped. You can go and get them and uh, they're a bit forgiving because you've got a sand and cement base there. You can just adjust as you go up. Whereas with the porotherm block, once you get that first course, absolutely plumb and level there is no reason why they should go out but sod's law you know you get up to the, the you've done the first lift you get up to joist level and you find they're a little bit out at that point what I would do is pop the joists in 
level those up obviously whatever you need to do to level them up and then from there on run another bed of sand and cement across the top of the blocks and set yourself level again you know which is just basically resetting the course which is done quite a lot in building anyway so that would be my way of doing it do a do a lift get yourself up to the first floor and then uh, get, get yourself up to joist level and then go reset the blocks out on sand and cement base so how do you cut these blocks well you can cut them with an angle grinder a lot of people do that you know cut off saw but you can also do it with a recip saw if you get the uh, tile cutting blades on a recip saw masonry blades then it's a very good way of cutting it you've got to wear eye protection because you do find those little bits of clay do splinter out slightly another good thing about these blocks is you can well aid them in cold weather down to zero so if you stop brick laying because it's got to about three degrees you've got a little bit more leeway with these and of course you can build the internal skin up so the external skin if you're brick cladding or you're doing anything else it's not critical you can get that internal skin built up and in the dry basically so all the internals can be going on at the same time or even before they start bringing up the outer skin so all the wall ties are available for these all the standard things that you might expect lintels and all those kind of things readily available in the system so it's reckoned that you can get up to joist tight you can do that first floor in a single day because they're stable enough they're not all going to fall over sometimes you you do that with block work and you find the whole lot comes down in one go so it's um because the way the adhesive dries it's really setting as you go and of course they're a lot lighter than concrete blocks uh, if you struggled putting those conkers in then you'd be very pleasantly surprised at just how light and easy these uh, clay blocks are they're made for wimps really if you're wondering about how thick these bed joints are they are actually just one millimeter thick so acoustically they're pretty good uh, you do have to seal all those little air gaps so you would need a parging coat if you're looking for that kind of noise resistant if you're near a busy road or something a railway that kind of thing and of course they are fire resistant so they got an a1 class rating on fire resistance which is a very important consideration these days and there's no shrinkage with them that's an absolute blessing so you can lay up to 20 meters of blocks linear meters without a movement joint which is a, a fantastic thing. I mean, most walls, you know, if you're building a house, that covers you on most walls. So you can kiss goodbye to those movement joints. So if you want to find out more about these blocks, contact Wiener Burger and they've got a technical department which is prepared to talk to you in English all day long. I hope that helps. I hope you found that interesting and I'd love to know whether you've got an experience with building with pyrotherm, whether you like them, whether you hate them, whether you'd like to build with them because I think unless we start getting a bit of encouragement from builders saying yeah I want to have a go with those um, we're not going to move forward but they are they're a thin joint uh, build mechanism a bit like doing thin joint air creep blocks but as, as I say I think the fact they don't crack so readily uh, is a major advantage of so if you've got any building materials that you'd like us to look at and maybe do a little bit of a pricey on or find out more about then let us know